This is the Daily Tech News Show for Monday, December 28th, 2020 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm Roger Chang, the show's producer. Welcome to our end of year moderator co-host show. This is the annual episode where we usually invite supporters to appear alongside us on the show. And this time we thought it'd be fun to have some of the folks who help moderate our Discord, our Twitch chat, to join us and talk about not only how they use technology, how they found DTNS, but also uh, moderation in general. Uh, joining us, Preston Monroe, a.k.a. BioCal. How's it going? Willie Scott, a.k.a. W. Scott is one. Hello. Beat, a.k.a. Beatmaster. Hello. And Dan Christensen, a.k.a. Sergeant Muffin. Howdy. Uh, folks, it's great to have you. Uh, Sarah, who should we start with? I thought we'd start with Preston. That's BioCow. And we're all going to ask you some similar questions. But really, the fun of this is getting to know some of the uh, the, the <laughs> monikers that we're all very familiar with, who help us a lot with the show, and kind of where they came to be. So, Preston, how did technology play a role in your life to this point? Um, it's definitely played a role in my life, um, all of my life. Um, I actually got into computers late, probably 98. I think I had a, a purple iMac was the first real computer I had, actually. Um, previous to that was uh, uh, in sixth grade, I had an Apple II. And, <laughs> but I was I, there's a big gap in there where I was missing things. But um, starting with that iMac and the internet, I, I, you know, got hooked just like everybody else did. And but the key thing was I wanted to know how it worked. So I was viewing the source code of pages in 1998. And, creating animated GIFs frame by frame, you know, before there were tools for really doing that. <laughs> it's just silly things like that. But uh, um, in my current role, uh, I'm in uh, banking and finance, and I uh, basically manage like online banking, mobile banking, uh, uh, digital payments for credit cards, Apple Pay, Google Pay, things like that. So I'm just immersed in technology every day at work. Well, you're obviously among friends on DTNS. So speaking of <laughs> DTNS, how did you get involved with the show? Um, I actually started watching um, uh, Tech News Today on the Twit Network, um, starting with episode <laughs> one, and watched it religiously, you know, or, or listened to it religiously um, to, through its entire run uh, up until the day Tom left, and including after. Actually, I, I, I gave it a go for about a month after that, but the new host just wasn't for me. Um, in the meantime, uh, Tom had launched Daily Tech News Show, and I just kind of followed him from there. All right, let's turn to W. Scottus One. You may hear his name uh, thrown out as providing things in the Twitch chat. Uh, Willie, how, how did you get involved in tech? Oh, oh, that's a uh, interesting story. So, like, I have always been fascinated with computers from from a very young age. Um, I there's pictures that my uh, that my dad took of um, me messing around with uh, their computer. It was running Windows ninety five back in the day. So. It's uh, it's been a while. Um, but the thing that really um got me into it and really interested, and it's like a weird angle, I guess. But I was messing in PowerPoint actually, and and just dealing with like shapes and being able to like make things inside a PowerPoint, like just fascinated me to no end. And it's been like an absolute um thrill to uh to be doing it ever since, um, to the point where I've, um, at one point I've been, I, I offer tech support to pretty much everybody I interact with, um, on, a, you know, on a semi-regular basis. So it's really, it's really great. Well, uh, we really appreciate you offering some of that, uh, technology uh, acumen, uh, in our Twitch chat and, and to our audience in general. Uh, how did you find us? How did you get involved in DTNS? Uh, well, um, there is a long story to it, but I'll give the short uh, version of it. So, um, actually it was, uh, through Lamar Wilson, believe it or not. Um, oh, nice. so I was a, uh, big fan of, uh, Lamar, um, big fan of all the big tech YouTubers in the space. If you, if you follow any of them, you know, of the names pretty well. Um, and, uh, he said, Hey, I'm doing a podcast called this week in YouTube. So I followed him over to there, and that's where I discovered the Twit Network, uh, discovered OMG Chad, which he's gone on to do amazing things as well, um, and uh, found Tech News Today, funnily enough, right as it was winding down, about two or three months uh, before you left the show, Tom, 
which was funny to me. Uh, but I uh, enjoyed it, um, every minute of it, and uh, followed you over to DTNS. I've been listening ever since. Oh, thank you, man. I'm glad you followed. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, let's move on to Beat. Beat Master, uh, wh wh where do you live in the corner of the tech world? Well, pretty much everywhere, if you ask some people. But most things that I do are tech-related. If I work for with it, sell it, or now I'm in the IT department, or we'll start in two weeks, exactly. So it will be my job, but it was always part of my life. Starting with the Commodore C64, but then advanced bit by bit. I wanted my Nintendo console, and my parents were sneaky and gave me a computer instead. <laughs> it was a wise decision of the, on their behalf. So I'm there where I am because of that now. Very cool. Well, it sounds like your uh, your 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 tech uh, the the world of tech as far as uh, your livelihood continues to evolve. But when did you get involved with DTNS? It has been a while because when did uh, TNT start? When when did you join? Twenty ten. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a ten year journey. I joined the Twitch streams two thousand eight on there and. Uh, just saw one or two episodes of uh, Buzz Out Loud, but you know, it was instant, instantly in, in love the way that Tom presented all his things and the analytical part and staying on point and I had to follow him in around the internet since then. <laughs> if I remember right, you used to greet me in the chat room before TNT every morning. Is that, am I remembering that right? That's very possible. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that was when I would sit down before we'd go live. I'd, you were one of the people hanging out in chat. Uh, uh, it was always nice to see that username in there. Uh, let's let's talk to you, Dan, Sergeant Muffin. Uh, how does tech play a role in your life, Dan? Oh gosh, where do I start? <laughs> I I was a normal kid, got involved in sports and all that stuff, and then third grade hit. We got our first computer with Windows ninety five, and then downhill from there. <laughs> um, got really, uh, involved in computers uh, and, you know, kind of like the other guys, it, it's once you start realizing what you can do with it, um, you just kind of want to learn more and more and more. And over the years, I've just on my own, even like middle school, I was building windows domain networks in our house just to learn how it worked. Um, so we had, you know, logins for the whole family <laughs> and group <laughs> policy. Um, so I, I was having a lot of fun and learning a lot of things. Um, went for college and, you know, got that, but I started at our family business, which was way behind the times. I wrote all the software for the company over the last 10 years. And we went from a company that did okay to doing very good. And, uh, as of 2020, I bought half the company now. So oh, congrats, man. it's, That's it's awesome. been a very, very busy, but prosperous year. So, yeah. And then, uh, how did you stumble upon this, uh, DTNS crew here? Sure. Uh, well, like Beatmaster, um, was watching Leo Laporte a lot back in the day. And uh, when Tech News Today was on, uh, I was watching all the time. Good source of tech news. And uh, I was actually teaching as an adjunct instructor for about two years at the local tech school. And I got there early and I'd have it up there. And that really got me into the uh, the groove of, you know, watching it daily and uh, turned out a lot, a lot of new people onto it. Um, and then uh, I really kind of dove in even more when I launched, you know, Diamond Club TV, the version two uh, in 2014, I believe, or 2015. Mm -hmm. um, and then unfortunately, you no, know, as time went on and we just platform shifted um, and I kind of had to focus more on my job. We closed it down and uh, still been watching and subscribing. And yeah, it's very happy to be here and part of the community. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Uh, it it's, it's through the good efforts of Dan that we have a, a video podcast, so we appreciate your help with that. Oh, yeah, anytime. Uh, and and all these folks, BioCal uh, with Showbot helping us pick the titles, uh, whether it's uh, like Beatmaster and, and W. Scott S1 helping with the moderation in Twitch and Discord, and I know BioCal and and Sergeant Muffin, you guys, you guys pitch in on that. Uh, you're all involved in moderation of our community, which I, I don't know about you, Sarah, but I, I feel like we have, we are lucky to have one of the best communities out there. Absolutely. It, you know, it cannot be overemphasized how important it is. And if there wasn't a community aspect, 
sure, we could deal with this ourselves if there were 48 hours in every single day. <laughs> yeah, right. But but it's just, it's not possible. And, and I think in many ways, moderation kind of happens in the background and you don't necessarily get accolades if everything's going well, but it takes a lot of work. It's, it's time and it's effort and, you know, and, and, and it takes some heart to, to care about the things that you believe in. So, so thank you all four for doing what you do, but why do you do it? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm curious to get your perspectives of, of, you know, I think a lot of people look at, at the moderation end and, and like Sarah said, they either don't notice it because it's working well, or they're angry at it because it didn't work well. Uh, with, I, I don't know if any of you want to start you know, by raising your hand or, or something, but, but sort of like, why do you think people, not only yourselves, but other people get into wanting to help moderate communities? Um, I, I, I can start with that one. I've been moderating in, in one form or another for about 20 years now on the internet. Um, the first one that I, uh, did was a, a web forum. Um, and the owner of the forum came to me and said, uh, I'm making you a moderator until you die or I find someone better. <laughs> <laughs> and he just kind of threw me into it. I, I had no choice, so I just became a moderator. Um, and that was a it was a web forum that had 200 people on it, and there was really no drama at the time. But it, it eventually grew to you know well over I think there were over 20 or 25 thousand oh wow regu regular users on this wow. big forum. Um, and so we we had this whole list of like guidelines and rules and strikes and three strikes and you're out and this all these rules and and. Uh, there were quorums that had to be met in the background by moder moderators in private before an action can be taken. So it, was, it really got advanced over the years um, for that web forum. Um, you know, originally it was just the owner deciding, you know, ban hammer this guy or whatever. But like I said, once it gets bigger, you can't just start banning people right and left because there has to be some sort of uh, precedence set on why you're taking action. And so why do you do it, though? Uh, well, why do I do it now? Um, <laughs> um, I, I am moderated on, on various discords and, and twitches, but um, I, I don't do a whole lot of moderation myself. Um, I know Beatmaster does and, and others do, uh, Willie, um, but um, I'll only do it if if nobody else is there to do it or if, if uh, you know, if we get a, a bot raid or something like that, I'll quickly put it into followers only or something like that. So is it, does like it that. feel like you just want to help make things better? Is that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's yeah. the, that's, that's the why of it. It, it. What you're looking for is the why is <clears throat> it's a good community and I want to keep it that way. Simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, for me personally, it's kind of just, it, it's always been a matter of, I've always been asked to like, Hey, uh, would you like to be a mod and help out? And I'm like, I'm always, yeah, absolutely. Um, and even when I'm not mod in a in in a community or so, I I try to always be like, okay, what can I? Is there any information that I can give someone that'll help them um, in any capacity, whatever that might be? You know, whether it's you know telling them, for example, I'll just give an example. Um, I had it the other day where someone was trying to figure out how to connect um, their Twitch Prime so that they could use their mm -hmm. Prime subscription in Twitch chat. Um, and so I provided them a resource um, for them to do that. And that's just kind of always the way that I've been. I've always tried to be as helpful as I can in any in, in any community I'm in, regardless if I'm a mod or not. And that also sets a tone, right? Because you're like, oh, you have a question. I have an answer. I'm helpful. We're all friends here. And it encourages people to act appropriately going forward. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely, I'd say I like to teach people how to use technology in new, in new ways, proper ways, uh, you know, think when they need help, things like that. And one of those, one of the steps in that is learning or teaching people how to act on the internet. <laughs> because some people don't know how to act on the internet, you know, they don't know what's, what's proper and what's not. And so you can kind of give them those little corrections and kind of help them on their way. I think most people would hear that and react like, ah, but they're not going to want to listen to you. Uh, but Beatmaster, I saw you nodding when, when Preston was saying that, like, <laughs> how do you approach that? On a case by case basis, you, you don't have a one size fits all solution. And that makes a good moderator that he knows patterns. He knows what's usual for certain communities and depending on the community itself or the streamer, the content, provider or the forum, whatever it represents, you have to adjust to that 
general spirit of that place. And I think that's what makes uh, with Scottis and Maiko and others good mods is that they have some experience throughout several places to know what if somebody is coming from a, a bad place or a good place when they argument and we make mistakes that happens it's mm -hmm. part of learning and uh, you have to just be certain enough that the actions you take are appropriate and at the same time be ready to learn and say okay i could behave dif differently in that case and as by co mentioned we, we talk behind scenes sometimes to mm -hmm. say look at this what do you think so it's not a one man show it's a, a collab yeah yeah and just communication right yes. mm. yeah definitely uh, uh behind the scenes communication is going on uh, all the time where you know uh, watch out for this or or this is kind of stewing in this area you know mm -hmm. things like that so uh it, it's really just kind of bouncing ideas off people sometimes um taking unilateral action is necessary like i said you you put chat into followers only if there's a, a, a spam bot coming in uh, or if there's one one troublemaker that's really causing trouble you can ban them and you can always unban them if if it was an accident or something or somebody says why do you do that it's easy to reverse so Dan, what do you think? Uh, what are your biggest challenges, you think, as far as moderation is concerned? Well, um, I've been involved in a lot of communities with moderation, not as polished as this community, where you, <laughs> you can kind of learn who can handle power and who can't. Um, so we've we've all kind of been there and we've seen it. We've seen the moderators that take the little bit of power you give them and kind of start molding. Um, so... You know, you, you kind of, <laughs> we're, we're very fortunate to have that here. Um, and, it, you know, in the, I guess I shouldn't say that uh, when I started kind of moderating as a, a younger kid, did I do it for power? Yeah, kind of. I'm not going to lie. I was a young kid. I didn't know any better. But, you know, I think out of moderation, you learn a lot about people and you learn to adapt because, um, like you guys said, Everyone's different. And the main goal is you don't want to make the, any issues worse. You want to try to either, if you can, hide the conversation, let them feel like they're getting their message across and don't let it disrupt and cause any problems. Um, but if you have to ban, you know, y you have to. But I would say, I guess, when I started, I, I banned a lot more people than I would probably like to admit. But, you know, growing up and getting the responsibility and, you know, now, it, I mean, when I was even at 20, you know, you realize y you have to prove yourself. I mean, it takes time to, to prove yourself that you can be trusted and it's so easily burned. You can make one very silly mistake and it can be burned. So yeah, yeah it's a unique challenge. Yeah, absolutely. I was, um, before I was even asked to become a, uh, moderator of the um of the night attack twitch for example um i had been a part of the community for over two years at that point and so it, that that very much is the case where it's like you you always want to find those people that are really like are really trustworthy and you know and you know them when you see them you know mm -hmm. like you you know when you when there's a when when the right person is doing the right thing you know it, it, it's always apparent What's funny with that, too, is that um, in my experience, I've seen dozens of people say, how do you become a mod? I want to become a mod in a, in a certain community. Those people never become mods <laughs> or rarely ever. Um, it's, it's normally the mods getting together in private and saying, throw out some nominations, some names. We'll go through and say, you know, what are the pros and cons? Any, any problems with this person? And as, if, as long as they, you know, you vet them and they kind of pass, then... You go to them and ask, do you want to be a moderator? But uh, very rarely have I seen anybody who's interested in it actually getting chosen. That's, that, that in itself is interesting. Why do you think that is? Because if somebody wants to follow the rules, uh, you know, p play nicely, smart, has the time, and, and is uh, enthusiastic about it, why, why are they not the people that get chosen? Yeah, in my experience, again, it's, it's just my experience, but it, it's – it's usually the younger people who are looking for that power. I think mm -hmm. um, there have been some some uh, more polished people, let's say, that that have uh, shown an interest. And in, and in, um, I'm speaking from the web forum. I, I 
moderated years back, but um, you know, they'd show interest and we'd toss their name in and maybe they got passed over two or three times because there were other candidates and then they eventually get in. But a lot of times it was just like new people joining the forum, you know, gung ho, like uh, I'm here and I want to be a mod and I want to be a part of everything. And that's, it's a little too in your face. Um, whereas most of the people who get chosen for moderator are involved, they're, they're helping without being asked to help already. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're kind of, they have those traits, um, the moderation traits and they show them and they're not asking, they're not looking for that power. They're just more of a natural fit. Yeah. So if, if you've got somebody who's already looking to help, why not help them help by giving them a little more power? You become a moderator by your behavior not right. by your desire correct yeah yeah yes yeah and and even when i was uh when i was first um asked to be a mod for the first time um in another um in another chat room um that was always like i never went out of my way to to ask to be mod but there was an opportunity where someone asked hey we're looking for people to uh to mod if, if you're mm-hmm. interested um shoot us a private message and then that's when i did it you know, because I, if, if I don't need to, like, if, if everything's going great, then everything's going great. You know, like, I, I don't, you know, I don't need to insert myself into this mm-hmm. unless it's absolutely needed, you know? Yeah, it feels like uh, what, what you guys are saying is that it's not that asking to be a mod is, is a bad thing or should disqualify you. Right. It's that most of the time you observe that the reason someone is asking to be a mod is not the is not motivated by the kinds of things you would want to see in a person who would make a good moderator yeah i i would agree with that they're they're yeah they want to be involved and that's great but they might be a little too excited about being involved which could lead to them taking actions that are outside the the mod core if you will uh they're their thoughts and their and their moderation style. So I mean, if yeah. you got someone that's too gung gung ho, who knows what they're going to do? Or they're mm-hmm. gung ho because maybe they legitimately want to help, but they also want the attention or the accolade or mm-hmm. or the power, like you were saying, Dan. Uh, and and what yeah. you want is is somebody who is motivated by I just want to help, and I don't want to I don't want to cause waves. I don't want to cause drama. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, and that's exactly what I was going to allude to, too, is the fact that, yeah, you know, it it, like we said earlier, it's very much an individual case basis because there there are there are probably some cases where they they are legitimately, you know, trying to help. And that's how they do it. You know, I wouldn't even I would not even say that that is inherently wrong, per se. Mm -hmm. Um, It's it's more just a matter of like the process to get you to there you know, doesn't always, isn't always that way, you know? You know, I, 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 go ahead, Tom. No, it was beat. I was beat. Go ahead, beat. And the thing is, if you want to be helpful, be helpful. And then moderators will notice or the community and put you in the place to help even more. Mm -hmm. So if you are an unknown factor and want to be mod, this means you want to have power. Mm. And that's, yeah, that's a little bit sus, as we would say. <laughs> the, yeah. the key word is uh, is time. You know, someone has to be around a community, has to understand what's going on, get the feel for things. Because uh, in the communities I run, it, it you want them to be around enough to know that, hey, this isn't just a flavor of the month visit that they're going to hang out and then they're going to uh, get, you know, just leave the community. Mm-hmm. So, you know, someone that's going to stick around that, is setting a good example and and yeah like you guys said not necessarily asking for it (laughs) because you know real leaders they're gonna have that ability to lead and show that they can you know solve issues without having to be a moderator and well dan you 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 hit on something that i think is uh, would be a question for a lot of folks all four of you have other things going on uh you know you're you're busy and you're doing this at the same time. I think there there would be a lot of people who would probably be qualified. You know, they got the desire. But they think, I, I mean, I have a job. I can't, like, how how do you manage your time so that you can make this work and you don't leave anybody in the lurch by not showing up? Yeah, no, that's true. Um, 
so to be honest, I have actually uh, left moderator positions. So there was a Reddit community that I was a moderator for that as I don't know if anyone else has moderated a Reddit uh, or subreddit, but if it's a popular one, you have to deal with a lot of stupid things. I mean, <laughs> the unfortunate part, and we, you know, we'll get into it at some point here, but the just Reddit in general, they have a problem with things being a little too open. So that was taking up a lot of my time and that I had to back out of. But between the other things I deal with, um, the nice thing is having Discord, um, you know, be able to send you kind of alerts on my phone so I can still keep working. And if something needs me or I need to do something, I, I can step away. And fortunately, in my position, I'm at the top, so I don't have other people, you know, saying, you know, you're fired. So I, I can, <laughs> as needed, you know, take care of that stuff. And I do my best to still get my work done, but also still, you know, have fun moderating because it's nice to throughout the day, not just think of work, work, work all day. You have to kind of space things out. So at the end of the day, you go home happy and not overly stressed. Yeah. And yeah. and it's also like, I, I would even say that like, for me personally, um, I, I, I very much was in that, um, same scenario where I was with, uh, I was in a, uh, much larger, um, community in terms of modding and, and it was kind of one of those things where it's like, I, I love to help out, but like, but yeah, no, I, I had to step back and realize, okay, yeah, no, this is not going to work because I just don't have the time to do this. And, um, and I was very glad, uh, I, I very gladly, um, you know, cause, cause they were like, Hey, uh, um, um, we're going to, uh, we're going to have you, uh, step aside for a little bit. And I was like, totally okay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you got to be willing to, um, you got to be willing to make those, you know, tough calls sometimes because you don't want to in certain cases. I think yeah. in, in some ways I feel like we're lucky that we have a lot of really good people in our audience. Yeah. Uh, we, we don't have such a big influx of unknown people like a subreddit can get. Uh, where where we we don't have that strong community knowledge where people know what's accepted and what's not and can help newcomers become accustomed to that. But do you think any of you that there's things that Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, you know, could take from your experiences to make moderation better in these larger arenas? Well, one thing comes to mind, um, and it's a fight that a lot of big companies have to deal with is, they, especially if they're publicly traded, you want to be able to show you have users. And the downside is it's too easy to sign up. Bots mm -hmm. are too easy to sign up. Spammers are too easy to sign up. You see that with Reddit. Um, I deal with a lot of small subreddits being nonstop, uh, not attacked, but flooded with T-shirt spammers where people will copy designs um, and then make their own store, resell the stuff and spam links. Um and the same really goes for Twitter. It's really easy to set up an account and you don't necessarily need to have any vetted address. Um, and that's the fight that we run into. You can ban someone and all of a sudden they're right back and no one has the ability to moderate such large platforms. They do their best, but it's, it's so hard though. Just like YouTube, there's no way anyone can watch all the videos on YouTube because it's uploading how many more times quicker than people can watch it. Right. So, right. Same type of problem. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, I'll I'll echo that sentiment as well. Um, because I, whenever I hear a, a story about um, you know, Twitter or YouTube or Facebook messed up and didn't, you know, didn't ban X account for Y reason, you know, I I'm always you know I always have to be mindful of like you know because we were mentioning earlier it's like mistakes happen you know like that's just part of human nature you know so. I, I would say for me being, being a mod myself, I can sympathize, um, a little bit with some of these, um, instances of, you know, whereas where some people would be very, very correctly outraged, perhaps in some instances, I can at least have the understanding that it's like, it's not an easy job. It is not an easy job to do this. But having said that though, there's always room for improvement. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, I, can, I just can't even imagine a platform like Twitter or Facebook or something like that 
um, just the the scale. Like, how do you even get a handle on that? It's it's hard for me to imagine uh, having you know done a small forum, a large forum, various uh, discords and twitches and things like that. You know, it, it all that all varies. You know, a, a really heavy forum, you have a huge moderator staff that has to agree and come to a a, a, a consensus. With a, a small Discord like DTNS, it's really only active for a couple hours a day. Um, and yeah, yeah. if people aren't, you know, people aren't sitting in that Discord 24 um, 7. I was going to talk about scheduling, you know, um, with things like uh, cord killers. It's like certain mods are on during cord killers and certain are on during uh, night attack or DTNS. And, and so you've got like almost day and night shifts. You might have a guy who. Mm -hmm you asked to be a moderator and he says, Oh yeah, I can, I can do it during the day. It's like, well, we're all full up on the daytime shift, <laughs> you know? So, um, but yeah, insomniac what, moderators, yeah. yeah. So or having <laughs> bots in other diff, uh, different uh, time zones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but when you get to that scale of, oops, when you get to that scale of Twitter and Facebook and, and, you know, whatever else, I, it just blows my mind. I don't even know how how they handle that kind of stuff. You know, I was I was hoping to interject one question to all mm -hmm. four of you: is how do you judge the success of your job? When do you know, like, okay, I'm doing a good job at this? Like, what what are your metrics? How do you de decide? What is it? The number of people in the the forum or whatever chat, whatever, stay the same, or it increases, or like, how do you judge how well you're doing? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I don't really know how you, you judge something like that on, on Twitch or Discord. Um, I mean, it, it kind of ebbs and flows. You get, you get an influx of new people or something. Let's say uh, one of the host guests on another show, and all of a sudden you get you know dozens or, or um, 100 people joining all at the same time, and they, they come from all walks of life. And, and um, that goes back to you know, with your, your behavior in one um, – uh, one community might be okay for that community and it's completely wrong for another. Um, so yeah. that's where, where moderation really comes in is and what, what we were talking about earlier about teaching is, you know, that's okay over there, but over here we don't do that. We do it this way. So it's kind of like guiding people in the right direction. And so it's really just incidents um, on the, on the forum that I used to moderate or moderate on uh, we'd open a thread for, every incident, I guess. So some months you'd have, you know, 20 threads opened and others you'd only have four. And so if you're doing a good job, then I guess the lower is the better, right? <laughs> yeah. I guess the thing I would say to, to that question specifically, um, one of the things that I have used as sort of like a gauge of how well I'm doing is if the community um, is willing to talk to you because that's one thing that, you know, obviously if there's a troll coming in and messing things up, you have to be abrasive as a mod, mm -hmm. but you can, you also have to have that compassion and understanding for people who are just, you know, n not, oh, what's the right word to use? I guess not, you know, like they're just trying to figure out what to do and how to do it right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think the way that I gauge my success, I guess, would be if the community is talking to you directly, not as if you're a mod, but as if you're just some ordinary user along with them in the chat. Mm -hmm. Just a just an extra helpful yeah. other person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and you know when you're talking moderation too, I can't remember the exact quote and even what's from, but it's the saying of if you do your job right, no one will know that you're you know it was ever done at all. Mm -hmm. So your main goal is to make the experience for the average user it, like you know there isn't problems, everything's good, and you can take whatever that uh, the dirty laundry that they're trying to air on the site, hide it, take care of it on your own, but you don't have to drag the general public into it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, in my experience, the the times that I've found the most strife, and this is usually more like IRC chat than, um, you know, sort of Reddit, uh, subreddits or that sort of thing, but kind of that real-time stuff, it's, it's the mods sort of clashing with the people who think of the mods as against them somehow. Like, you know, you're yeah. not my dad, you know, that kind of thing. And it, it's 
when it works well, it works so seamlessly. And DTNS has such a good community. I'm I'm always floored that we just well, I mean, with very few exceptions, we just don't have that kind of strife because everyone mm. feels a certain amount of respect for one another. And it's a, mm. a community that wants to share knowledge and nobody's better than anybody else. And that's pretty cool. I mm. I am constantly amazed. In some in some fashion, it's almost surreal at how stable and how 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 you know how amenable everyone is in in our whether it's discord whether it's twitch or whether even even in our emails for as long as it has to you know i've been in i've been at companies where we've had message boards we've had sites we've need we've needed moderation where it works okay even for a couple of years and then something happens and it starts this giant roller coaster all the way down and you know, testament to all of your efforts. It just is really rock solid with the Daily Tech News Show. And it's just totally amazes me every time I I, I look inside. Um, and, you know, and I guess one other question I want to ask all four of you is, is there a misconception you would like to dispel about what you do or 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 what goes into your thinking process when you moderate? Like oftentimes, like as I think uh, um, Willie uh, alluded it to earlier, like sometimes people have the belief that mods are in it for the power because they want to go around <laughs> with the giant band hammer and just like looking for an excuse for, for you know, for someone just to say the wrong thing so they can just whack them out of the forum. Yeah. I mean, is no. it? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh yeah, I definitely there's, there are some people who want to flex and, and you're going to get a couple of those. And, and <clears throat> I think a lot of moderators do that once in a while, but you kind of have to, it's your job. Um, I think the, the biggest, uh, misnomer would be, uh, that we get paid very well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. Uh, Let's I feel really bad there. about that part, but yeah, <laughs> these, these folks are just doing it for volunteer and I'm, I'm incredibly yeah. appreciative of that. No, I, I'm just kidding. Of course. No, I, I think the, the biggest misnomer would be that there's some sort of like secret plot between moderators and the, and the regular users or something. It's it really, you know, every once in a while you get one person who's like, you're, you're ganging up on me and you're not, you're not letting me talk and. I don't know, freedom of speech or something. I don't know, uh -huh. but uh, um, things like that. You're you're oppressing them or something, and it's really just it's the moderating. The way I think of it is um, it, in DTNS's case, like uh, Discord is Tom and Sarah and Roger's living room, and you're throwing a party and you're inviting people over. And if people start knocking over plants and spilling beers, we're gonna ask them to leave. Yeah, that's just the way it is. You know, it's 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 your guys' living room. We're there as kind of bouncers, and you know we're we're acting on your behalf um, because you trust us. But um, you know if if we ask you to leave, it's not personal. It's not that we're ganging up on you. It's that you did something that you know we we either need to ask you to stop, or if you don't, then you're out. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think one of the other biggest misconceptions I think is that I know. Um, certainly when I was, you know, a novice user, so to speak, um, I, I always thought that, um, you know, the mods always have like the answers to pretty much any question. Like it, it's almost as if we're like a direct arm to, um, to, to you guys. And in some cases that's true, but in a lot of cases, what I've noticed is that like a, a lot of the stuff um, that happens like behind the scenes, it's like we're hearing about it at the same time that everyone else is. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like we have early access to important um, knowledge most of the time, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. true. Yeah. No, no show Friday after Thanksgiving. That was a surprise to me. <laughs> so. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just saying like, I, you, you don't, you don't let us in on that kind of stuff, but it's not, we don't need to know really. Well, and, and there's also certain things where you, people, and, and th this, this goes all the way up the chain. Uh, people are like, why didn't I know earlier? And it's because nobody knew earlier. Right. Mm -hmm. It's and, and the Friday after Thanksgiving is not an example of that, but, right. uh, but, but there are some things where 
we decide something late. Maybe we should have decided it earlier, or maybe mm -hmm. we just decided it in the moment. We're like, hey, let's do this thing, spur of the moment. And then we tell people, and people say, well, why didn't you tell me earlier? Like, well, because we didn't, we didn't even... We know about made the it. decision. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and and that that applies to y'all as well, where even if we do tell you immediately, like, oh, here's the new thing, then you're gonna tell people and they're gonna be like, oh, so why am I just hearing about this now? Like there's always this perception that everything you're told always was known for a while before somehow. Yeah. And sometimes well, it was, right? But it, yeah, sure. but often, you know, things happen on the fly, especially when you do daily stuff. I mean, <laughs> it's it's <laughs> as you all know, I mean, it's a grind. We're we're constantly reiterating and and sometimes mm -hmm. things do change last minute. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, uh, I cannot thank you all enough. Uh, you four and the others. There are plenty of other people uh, uh, pitching in. Uh, so as I go around, if you want to uh, throw some shout outs to other mods that, that you want to make sure get recognized, uh, uh, please do. Uh, and anything else you've got going on, starting with you, Preston. Um, yeah, I definitely thank you to everybody who helps in the community. Um, it's not just mods, it's it's other people too. You know, Zoe's in there every day and, and cheering people on. So as just as one example, um, you know, there's many, many others, but that's a name that, that gets mentioned a lot. That's why I use her. <laughs> But um, what else is going on? Um, so, yeah, I've got showbot.tv, which is uh, a place um, where uh, Twitch channels can collect titles, questions. If, you, if it's a question and answer show, it can be used for lots of different things. So check that out. And um, catch me on Twitter at BioCow. And uh, BioCow.com is my website, which is real boring. <laughs> Uh, couldn't be worse than mine. Uh, Willie Scott, let's move on to you. Uh, very, uh, very active on our Twitch channel, but uh, you, but you have other projects as well. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, I obviously want to give a shout out uh, to Sunbun. Sunbun is mm -hmm. like the god among men when it comes to modding. He is the best. Um, um, love him. Um, you can find uh, me. Um, I stream every Wednesday and Friday night on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash wscott is one. Um, and if you want to support me even further, uh, patreon.com slash wscott is one. And when this episode comes out, uh, my first episode of my new podcast, uh, Cinema Vention, is coming out where I talk about um, movies that I haven't seen, like classic movies that I haven't seen. Uh, First episode is on Die Hard, so oh, wow. figured, figured it's perfect for the Christmas season. You mean you haven't seen before? You watch them before the show, right? Yes, no, but I haven't seen the. I'll watch them for the first time, and then yeah. I'll talk about them on the show. Because it'd be really bold if you did an entire episode of a movie you'd never actually seen at all. That would be, <laughs> yeah. that would be quite the show. Just picking yeah. it up as you go along. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. a cliffhanger. Yeah, <laughs> that's good stuff. Uh, thank you, W. Scottis One. Uh, whenever. I see uh, anything out there uh, involving uh, the uh, the uh, uh, pastebin.com website, uh, no matter what context it's in, I think of you because <laughs> he gives us a paste bin of all the links uh, from the show in, in the Discord every day. Uh, and you've been doing that thank forever, you. so thank you. Uh, thank you. Beatmaster, uh, what about you? Yeah, I'm thankful to T2 T2 that uh, has made me the first mod on the crew. I think one of the first mods, and uh, he's another god amongst men. We have many gods amongst us, mm -hmm. and uh, of course the whole community. Because as you said before, we have a rare exception on the internet that everybody is so involved in a positive way, and I'm thankful for them to make us our jobs almost obsolete, but not quite. Getting closer all the time. <laughs> and Dan Christensen, Sergeant Muffin, where yes. do people keep up with the rest of your work? All right. Well, a lot of my work is just private sector business stuff, but I do, <laughs> uh, I do have a website, which again, um, not not very good. Uh, that's SergeantMuffin.com. Um, I'm on Twitter at Sergeant Muffin, S G T Muffin. Um, and in regards to uh, you know moderator uh, Ethan Kane, uh, I would say Amos. You know he he really goes out of the way. I've worked with him in so many different aspects, and I know people. You know they see him on the show, um, but gosh, I've worked with him so long. Such a nice, honest guy. Pleasure to know him, and 
He really he really cares about keeping communities running strong. Indeed, good good guy. Beatmaster, was was there any place you wanted to direct people to to find more about you? Um, I don't have any places on Twitter. I'm Beatmaster80, and I never tweet or, or almost never, so I wouldn't bring it much to you. But you can be get in contact with me there if you want to. And uh, I record shows from Dick the Bertolo, the guest face, and uh, upload it on my channel, beat, uh, on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash 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 beatmaster. And uh, you can see the shows you missed there and future episodes that will come up. Excellent. Uh, thank you all. Also, I want to uh, shout out uh, Captain Kipper, Jack Shid, Scotty Rowland, uh, who uh, moderate our subreddit at uh, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Uh, if you are one of the people that helps moderate our stuff and we didn't mention you today, uh, consider it like the Oscars. We just got way too nervous and forgot you, but we do not appreciate you any less. Uh, so thank you all uh, for joining us. And I, I think this was this was fun. This was a, a, a really fun way to do the listener co-host show, uh, which this year is the moderator co-host show. So thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, folks, uh, don't forget, if you uh, want a DTNS hat, hoodie, mouse, mask, mask uh, any, anything like that, uh, we still got them. Go check them out, dailytechnewsshow.com slash store. Uh, and also, speaking of Amos, no one should have to spend New Year's Eve alone, and that might be a little harder this year, but... Every year, Ritual Misery presents the Diamond Club New Year's Eve Streamathon, 27 hours of raising money for sick kids through extra-life.org. And this year, Sarah and myself will be ringing in the new year with a live show uh, as part of that Streamathon. We'll have one of those hours. So join us New Year's Eve at 2230 UTC. That's 1430 Pacific. So an hour later than DTNS normally is for good year internet. Uh, <laughs> Sarah, I have no idea what we're what we're gonna do, but it's gonna be fun. I know. Oh man, you know this year has been challenging, but it's also been a good year. I think we got an hour in us. Oh, we mm -hmm. do. We definitely. Even if we just oh, talk we about tacos for an hour. And, That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Br bring bring the mold wine and tacos. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Find all the details, including the full schedule, because uh, there's lots of other great people involved at ritualmisery.com/streamathon. And we're doing special shows this week, but we are live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 21.30 UTC regularly. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. If you want to send us an email, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We'll see you tomorrow. What do we have, Tom? We have our best of 2020. Good day, Internet. See you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>